World champion Hakan Karlquist, he won both legs in this round last year, but this season he's been dogged by injury. He returns to racing today. So those are the men to look out for in the first leg, which is raced over 40 minutes and two laps. On this visit to Hawkston Park in Shropshire, we'll see the start. So let us join our commentators Dave Nicholl and Chris Carter. Welcome to Hawkstone Park, a colourful scene here for this British Motocross Grand Prix. And as you said, Dickie, some of the finest riders in the world, and perhaps all of the finest riders in the world. Andre Mulherb, twice a 500cc world champion. Georges Jovet, another Belgian, the reigning 250 world champion. And sadly, an injury this morning for the current 125cc world champion, Eric Gaboz, puts a big question mark over him. Dave Nicolo, you, you suspect that he might actually come out onto the grid. Yes, I saw the accident this morning, Chris, and it was a nasty fall. I understand he split or damaged the cartilage. He's received doctor's uh, attention, but there is a possibility he might still ride. So we've got uh, Malherb Jobe, the two Belgians, 27 points separating those two in the World Championship. Two races today here at Hawkstone Park, and each race giving 20 points to the winner of each leg. So 40 points up for grabs, and two more rounds to come following this one. So plenty of chance for uh, Jobe to catch Malherb, and talking to Jobe yesterday, he felt very confident he could do that. Dave Thorpe, fastest in practice, and certainly the home fans here will be rooting for Dave, the talented young 21-year-old. But one or two other surprises, a big surprise and a mystery is the fact that Graham Noyce, so long the top man of British motocross, has just failed to arrive. Uh, he left his home in the Southampton area at 6 o'clock yesterday morning, and nobody has seen sight or sound of him since then. Meantime, the riders come out onto the grid. There's Dave Thorpe, the British boy, number five. And after time to practice, the riders then have the choice of position. Number two, Andre Mulher, the man who leads the World Championship, lining up next to Dave Thorpe. Then the rest of the grid slowly coming forward. We're looking for number one, of course, Harkin Carlquist. He was ninth fastest, and he'll be here into sight any minute now. That's number... 66 so we're looking for Carl Quist who there he is number one just waiting at the back of the grid to pick a spot and uh, Harkin Carl Quist uh, the hard man of motocross this is a rough tough sport by anybody's standards and the men who ride and do well are tough hard men but Harkin Carl Quist well he's something special he's he broke his thumb badly early on this season then Two weeks after having had the injury plated, he was back in action. He smashed his finger on the same hand against a ch chestnut fencing and shattered the finger between the knuckle and the hand in seven places. Well, even for Carlquist, that was too much. He put him out for about six weeks, but he's back on the comeback trail. He's determined to do well. Remember, of course, that Carquist won both races here and the last few men coming up to the grid now. The, st the start just seconds away. Uh, the start proceeding here, Chris, is the riders on the line now. They have a 30-second board which is just about to go up. At the end of the 30 seconds, a five-second board goes up and the start will go between five and ten seconds after that board. So the 30-second board, the riders just uh, moving their things. It's a concrete slab there on. There's plenty of grip there for them, Dave. Yes, the, the interesting thing about the start gate, they mustn't touch that T, otherwise it won't go down. They must hold back. Each, each metal bar there you can see is individually controlled. If the wheel touches that, it stops it falling down into the slot there on the ground. That's the metal bar that holds them back. The five-second board has gone up. They're ready to charge, and down goes the tees, and away they go. And it's number five, Dave Thorpe there, is up with the leading group, and it's Dave Thorpe, I'm sure, who was up there with the leaders, and Dave Thorpe couldn't have had a better start if he's tried. He's there in second place at the moment. No, it's uh, Kurt Nichol who's leading. My <laughs> Your son, well, Kurt Nichols, Dave Nichols' son, in the lead with Dave Thorpe in second place. So we've got British boys, first and second, and Harkin Parkwist is there, number one. So, too, is at number 35, and that's Lawrence Spence. So three British boys in the first four. What a tremendous start to this opening leg here at Hawkston Park. Well, this is a rough, tough circuit. It's one of the toughest 
in the country, perhaps one of the toughest in the world, Dave. I think it's the best circuit we've got in England and one of the best in the world. It's in prime condition today. The club have watered all night virtually. They've watered again this morning and it's in perfect condition. So the pack in pursuit of Kurt Nickel, 19 years of age. And if Dave Nichols sounds a little bit nervous, you can't really blame him because that's his boy out there. And number five, Dave Thorpe, the reigning British champion, is hard in pursuit. There are the two big jumps. And that was the place that Eric Gavors crashed it down this morning. And it's going to be Kurt Nickel who leads. Well, a tremendous performance by Kurt Nickel. Kurt on the KTM production machine and uh, certainly not a, the most competitive bike in the race, Dave. No, Kurt's on a production, purely a machine you can buy from the shop, but he's stuck with it all year and he's happy with it. That's the mammoth climb up the big Hawkston Hill. It's the natural bit through the top and then down the other side. And it was Kurt Nickel leading at the end of the first lap from Dave Thorpe. And he's still there. And Lawrence Spence is in third place. Well, that really is, and um, Harkin Carlquist has dropped back another place, which just makes me think that perhaps that's Georges Jove who's gone through. In fact, it, according to our lap dodge, it was Jukka Senton and the Finn, but here they come over one of the jumps again. Kurt Nickel, Dave Thorpe, then Lawrence Spence. David Watson, Carlquist, Jove, Senton and Pearson. Well, what more can British fans ask for? And there's 20,000 enthusiasts round lining the Hawkston Park circuit, and we have four British boys out in front. Kurt Nickel, 19 years of age, followed by the reigning British champion, 58. That's Nickel. Number five, Dave Thorpe, really trying hard. Thorpe putting the pressure on now. Nickel, the teenager, under pressure from Dave Thorpe and Thorpe using the berms. That's the, the dirt that's been raised up into a rut to the highest advantage he can. And Harker Carlfist is there in fifth place. And Kurt Nickel still there, holding off Thorpe. That's uh, Lawrence Spence. Well, a great ride too by Dave Watson and Lawrence Spence, Dave Nichol. Yes, that's three factory Kawasaki's in the first six. That Normally we have Hondas up there, but there's a couple of Hondas missing at the moment. So we're looking for the Hondas. That's number 32, Michel Magarotti, the Italian on uh, next year's uh, production Kawasaki being given a run here today. That's right, that's out for the first time in the Grand Prix this year. And Thorpe's gone through, Dave Thorpe is now in command. Thorpe, who lies in fourth place in the championship table, desperately would like to uh, pull some back here. Kurt Nichols still there, Lawrence Spence in third place, and Carl Quist, I think, going ahead of Dave Watson at the top of that steep, gigantic, awe-inspiring Hawkston Park Hill. It really is, it, it looks even too steep to walk up when you stand, and that's the descent with Dave Thorpe now stretching his advantage. And that is Carl Quist, I'm sure, who's now gone through into fourth place ahead of Dave Watson. Well, Dave Watson, uh, a young man, there's Dave Thorpe, number five, the leader. And Thorpe really has got to try and make the charge if he can. 40 minutes plus two laps, the opening leg. <laughs> And Dave Thorpe was saying yesterday here that uh, there's Carlquist. Park and Carlquist now closing on Lawrence Spence. This is the race leader in your picture, Dave Thorpe. Dave Thorpe, Kurt and Nickel, number 58. There's Lawrence Spence. Park and Carlquist behind. Then it's Georges Jobe beginning to make his move, Dave. Yes, um, it's, this is the all-important part of the race. You need a good start, but then you must try and settle into a routine, a nice rhythm, because there's a long, long race ahead. But uh, Calquist has moved up there to fourth, and he looks to be going well. Well, if support is anything, if support can carry Dave Thorpe to victory, you can see the fans and the marshals waving the British boy on. Kurt Nichols still going well. Lawrence Spence still holding off Calquist. 
Then Chauvet in fifth place. And I think that was Malherb there beginning to move up, David. I didn't see. I thought it was Sintonen, actually. And certainly we've got to start looking on the lap chart to see where Andre Malherb is. But this is Dave Thorpe. He was right with the leaders until he went to the United States and Canada. Scored just 14 points there from a possible 80. And that really was the time, the moment that he lost, realistically, his chance of winning the World Championship. Well, he's in with a good chance of closing the gap on the injured Eric Gavars. He is 16 points behind Gavars going into today's meeting. Thorpe on the downhill descent, the Hawkston Hill. And Malherb is ninth at the moment. And uh, that's still not putting Malherb out of the picture, is it, Dave? No, not at this stage of the race. Malherb's a very cagey rider. He'll keep pressing on for the whole 40 minutes. So, Thorpe, the leader, chasing... So Dave Thorpe, the British boy, going well out in front, leading British boy, Kurt Nickel in second spot. Lawrence Spence, the Northern Ireland rider, is in third spot. And Harkin Carquist, on his comeback, is in fourth place. That's the scene. Car Carquist supporter like me, you perhaps believe that this man could and should have been the world champion this year if the injuries had been struck. Yes, Chris, he, he's the hard man of the sport to ride only a few weeks after having his thumb plated. But there is Georges Jobet, number 12. So Kurt Nickel has got a double-pronged attack right behind him. Oh, and a ball there. Kurt just losing it going over the top of that jump. And Lawrence Spence couldn't see... Uh, Kurt over the top of that brow, and that's two of the British boys really in trouble, and Lawrence Spence, I don't quite know what he's saying to Kurt, but I bet it's not very nice. I should think there's a few words being uttered there, but neither are damaged. Well, calm bite start, it fires up, Kurt Nickel is away, and this is the moment when Kurt Nickel, there you're going to see... Kurt just, he lost the front end going over the edge there and just slid down gently. Not too much problem, but I think he lost the motor. But the point of impact when Spence comes over was a bit more tricky. So, the situation now is that out in front is Dave Thorpe and up into second place goes Hark and Carfist. In third place is George Jobe. In fact, Jobe has gone through to second place ahead of Carl Quist. So it's thought being chased by the reigning 250 world champion, George Jobe. There's the leader gone through. We wait now to see the second place man. The seconds tick away. It's a good lead for Thorpe, but whether it's a lead that he can keep to the end of the race, there is Jobe. And behind him is Carl Quist. Well, Dave Thorpe, in fact, increased his lead and is now well in command as we pick up the race for the last lap, rejoining our commentators Dave Nicholl, that's young Kirk's dad, and Chris Carter. One more lap then for Dave Thorpe. Dave Thorpe up the hill for the last time. A long, long gap then before Georges Jobet, the Belgian, on the green Kawasaki goes through. And there's Jobet, a comfortable margin. Yes, Dave Thorpe's now 16 seconds ahead. He's on his last lap and he knows he's got that cushion and this is when he'll just take things a little more cautiously. Perhaps take a gear lower in some of the bends just to make sure he doesn't make a mistake. That's Carl Quist in fact. And there's Dave Thorpe. Dave Thorpe on his final lap. Less than half a lap to go now for Thorpe. From Woodley near Reading in Berkshire been a Honda rider for the past two seasons, was the 250cc British champion in 82, the 500 British champion last year, and a rider who gets better and better almost every month. 
and the crowd still urging him on almost in sight now of the chequered flag you can see how enthusiastic the supporters are here today and, and spare a thought for while well, we're talking to supporters for the two busloads of eric gabor fans who came over from Belgium to see their man ride and did so uh, a coach ride from Belgium to see Gabors and a poor man injured himself in practice. And the crowd cheer and wave. Dave Thorpe just a few yards now, the double jump, no risk there, no danger. The checkered flag will go out and Dave Thorpe will have won the first leg of the British Motocross Grand Prix. Checkered flag, Dave Thorpe punches the air. An excellent ride. A long wait, 16 seconds the gap then. Between him and second place man, Georges Jobet. Third, by the way, was Andre Vromans of Belgium. Fourth was the world champion, Harkin Carlquist. And after his triumph, Dave Thorpe spoke to Paul Fowler. Dave Thorpe, a magnificent ride, the second Grand Prix win of the season. How do you feel? Obviously, I'm very, very pleased to win it uh, in front of the home crowd. It was, Kurt helped me really at the beginning because um, he got away with me and he held him up a little bit, which enabled me to get away a little bit. But um, I was very, very pleased the way it went. I felt good at the end. So uh, keep my fingers crossed for the next race. And you had no problems at all throughout the race? No, none at all. The bike was good, you were fit? Yeah, the bike ran perfectly and I only made a few mistakes and the crowd was superb, you know. They were cheering me on every inch of the way. It was really ha good. How much help did you actually get from this cr crowd here at Hawkstone Park? Oh, they were tremendous. There wasn't a section of the track really where they wasn't cheering me on. Very good. And now forward to the second leg this afternoon. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll go back and have a sleep now, and uh, hopefully I should be all right. I feel real good. Dave Thorpe, thank you very much. Good luck. For the Repeat the victory of the first leg. The British boy winning the first leg here at Hawkston Park. Georges Jobet, the Belgian, pulling to within 21 points of championship leader in second place. Third in that first leg, of course, Andre Fromans, another Honda factory man. Then Harkin Carlquist, five second board is up. They're watching those metal tees in front of them. The metal bars drop, away they go. And Malherbe this time, Andre Malherbe is the man who made a superb start. And it was Mal Andre Malherbe, the man who leads the championship points table, who led the charge. But it's Dave Thorpe who's got back in front of Malherbe, back in fourth place. It's Dave Thorpe ahead again. Well, what a magnificent ride by the British boy. Dave Thorpe is there. Malhub is down in fourth place. The Finn, Jukka Sintonen was there in fifth place, but it's Dave Thorpe. Dave Thorpe out in front. Number 60, that's Perry Leesk, another British boy having his uh, share of glory. Well, a splendid drive by Perry Leesk in second place, and that Harkin Carlquist was there in third spot. Andre, Andre Malherb was down in fourth place, and Dave Thorpe in front, and the 20,000 fans here at Hawkston breathe a sigh of relief as Thorpe controlled that tricky moment. And that looks as though it's Carl Quist who's through into second place now. Park and Carl Quist to the Swede. Look at these men leaping over this big jump just before the little chicane and the charge up the Hawkston Park Hill. Motocross, a rough, tough sport. And at the end of that lap, it was Dave Thorpe in the lead. Park and Carlquist in second place. Then it was Andre Malherbe in third spot. Perry Leesk was down in fourth place, bike number 60. In fifth place was number seven, Yuki Sintonen. And then behind him was Georges Jobet on the Kawasaki. Behind Jobet was the Ulsterman, Lawrence Spence. And behind Lawrence Spence was 58, Kurt Nickel. Well, Daddy Nickel. What a start to this race.
Yeah, David uh, Thorpe's made a good start. I spoke to him between the races, and he said that he wanted the race pattern to be the same. He wanted to take the lead and draw out a comfortable lead if he could. But I don't think it's going to be so easy this time because Malherbe's there right from the beginning now. Indeed, Malherbe up to third place, relegating Perry Lease to fourth position as he had done at the end of that race, right behind, the end of that first half, I should say, right behind uh, Carl Quist, there, number five, Dave Thorpe, fresh as a daisy after that first hard, gruelling 40 minute plus two lap leg, and Thorpe looking good, using the berm, that's the loose soil that's been packed into, and Thorpe getting crossed at it then, Carl Quist behind, and Malab also looking very spectacular, Perry Lees, then the Finn, then Giorgiobi, number 12, then Kurt Nickel looking good as well, eighth in the first leg despite that uh, nasty spill. That's number 62, Willie Simpson, the Scottish boy, so another British boy up in the top ten at the moment. Thought number five. Carl Quist in second place. Well, Carl Quist uh, deliberately took a breather in the first leg because he felt that as this was his comeback meeting uh, on the Grand Prix trial after quite a layoff, he's had about six weeks on because of uh, hurting his finger. Carquist decided he wanted to take a breather, he didn't want to blow it all uh, and then he found that really he could have been as strong throughout the race as he was, was at the start and the end bits and I think we're going to see Carla having a go this time Dave. Yeah it looks that way, he, he spoke to me and said that he was troubled by his hand in the first one but uh, he, he knows what to do and he, he's going to be in there. No change in the first three then and uh, the rest of the pack picking their lines, a choice of lines, extreme right or extreme left, nobody wants to go up the middle though, and the mechanics, brave men that they are, rushing out to the middle of the track to shove in front of the riders' noses, the blackboards telling them their position, the laps to go, as Dave Thorpe leads the descent, Carl Quist still second, Malherb is in third spot, Jobe beginning to climb, Five is Thorpe. One is Carquist. Two, Malher. Andre Malherb, who uh, had a tumble early on in the first leg, and that explained uh, his load of performance, but Malherb again scored points. His lead at the moment, 21 points in the championship chase. Five minutes gone in this second leg, 40 minutes plus two laps. The sun blazing down over this colourful Hawkston Park circuit. And uh, between the two legs of the British Grand Prix, we've had two supporting races. And uh, those races have churned up this circuit some more, Dave. That's right, Chris. We've had two races, you say, and that's cut the circuit up. It's, it's a lot more bumpy now than the first race. It's also beginning to become a little bit dusty. They watered between races, but as Chris said, with this hot weather, it's, it's soon going to dry out. And of course, it's not just a question of dust that the problem is. And Carl Quist and Malher battling away with side to side, and Carl Quist chops across the pass back of Malher. Well, these two rivals, Carl Quist, the reigning world champion, Malherb, Twyan Malherb is through. And Carquist looks to be in trouble, Dave. Yes, as we said in the first race, the important thing at this stage of the race is, is to find a rhythm where you, you can go at a comfortable speed. Carquist can't find that. He, he's in trouble. He's made two or three mistakes, and we can see the ground he's lost there now from Malherb in the space of a quarter of a lap. And the Finn, Jukka Sintonen, man who lives, in fact, at Imatra, which is uh, the... Uh, home of the road racing circuit in Finland, the, the major road racing circuit, but uh, this man, and you can see the Finn, Sintonen goes past Carquist, so Carquist loses another place, so Sintonen up into third place now, three laps gone, Thorpe the leader, in second place is Malherb, and third now is Sintonen. So, uh, with three laps gone, and 
and just over five minutes gone in the Hoxton Park and I gather Dave Thorpe is still out in front is that right Chris he, he is indeed Dickie and Dave Thorpe is pleasing this 20,000 crowd here at Hawkston Park heading as he is for a victory overall victory won the first leg you'll remember and he's going so well in this second leg but it's not been easy for him behind has been this battle there's Dave Thorpe bike number five you can see the fans and the marshals waving him on but behind him has been a absolutely superb battle between the Belgians Georges Jobet, Andre Vromans and Andre Malherbe Thorpe has seen none of this battle but it's been a, an excellent scrap nonetheless at the moment Romans has the advantage Romans is in second spot George Jobe is third and Andre Malherbe is fourth Park and Carlquist as you've heard unfortunately forced to retire he was charging with the leaders but uh, whether he hurt his hand again or, or had some problem with the motorcycle we don't know Thorpe the 21 year old British champion moved into third place on the championship table and looking very good indeed yes Chris uh, David's having an excellent race this second one again he's uh, got a comfortable lead of about nine seconds which his mechanic his father Keith will have given him and he, he, he's using all the right lines he's moved over onto the smooth parts of the track and he, he's riding well Well, Thorpe's only problem really is trying to avoid the tail enders, trying to make sure he doesn't get tangled up with them, and to uh, trying to avoid, of course, uh, getting tangled up with them or making a mistake. Well, it, the word from the lap score is that Jobe has lost some ground, so whether Jobe took a tumble, we're not quite sure. Jobe, who was battling with Andre Romans, there is uh, second place man Andre Romans, and he really has got an enormous lead now over third place man George Jobe. Well, Jobe uh, will be disappointed about that because obviously if he could have passed Romans, he would have made an even better uh, job of closing the gap on Andre Malherbe, the current world championship leader, who really, and there is uh, Jobe coming up the hill and it looks as though he's uh, got a, a bit of tape yes Chris I think George has made a mistake and gone through the the side of the track he's got the tape which marks the side of the track wrapped around his back wheel this can be a dangerous thing to happen it can wrap around the brake mechanism and jam it on but uh, he's still pressing on so I think he's okay Dave Thorpe the current British champion, as we said before, he had a wrist injury a couple of weeks ago, but that wrist injury appears to have been healed up. He's riding absolutely superbly. Um, I just noticed Dave Thorpe throw off his goggles. This, I would think, is because he's, he's really getting hot. After 40 minutes racing, he's sweating. The sweat in the helmet comes down into the goggles and mists them up. And he's obviously now thrown them off for better vision. But this can be a mistake if he gets tangled up with back markers. The sand then is put straight into his eyes. A calculated gamble from Dave Thorpe. He obviously won't want any sand. 40 minutes gone then, so when Dave Thorpe comes round to the start and the finish line, he'll get the board showing two laps to go, and really those two laps will probably be the longest of his life, Dave. Yes, uh, when he gets the two laps, he, he will desperately not want to make a mistake. He will be being cautious. He'll probably be going a gear lower in some places, so not to stall, so he gets home. Thorpe safely passed another tail ender, a long, long way ahead of the second place man, Andre Romans. Third place, but a long way bound, is Georges Jobe. Fourth, still, Andre Malherbe on bike number two. Then in fifth position is uh, bike number ten. And that's, of course, Jack van Beethoven, the six foot seven inch tall Belgian. Then the Finn. Jukka Sintonen, Romans safely through, and can Jobe get back on terms? Well, he's charging hard. That's uh, 35 a tail ender. We wait to see. It's number 12, Jobe. 
Well, you can see the uh, very much evidence of uh, that. There's the front mud guard, very severely dinted. He, he definitely had an off-track excursion, Dave. Yeah, I think it was more than just a little mistake. The front end's definitely bent. I think it looks like he may have gone over the handlebars. Well, George Jobe will be kicking himself for that mi mistake. He's got less than two laps to catch if Roman's ahead of him. But let's uh, linger and think about this man, Dave Thor. What a tremendous performance from the British boy. And Thorpe has lapped all but the first nine riders. And that really is remarkable in competition at this level. Dave Thor, his wife Sharon here, little baby boy Lewis. We don't want to speak too soon, Chris, with David. Just a little bit over a lap to go, but he really has ridden a copybook two races today. He's hardly made a mistake. Well, so before this race, Dave Thorpe had only won one leg on, in the World Championship table. He won the second leg in uh, Sweden. And uh, he's had bad luck in other rides at the times when he felt that he could and should have won. And, uh, made some mistakes but no mistakes at all so far here at Hawkston. Oh Chris, this is just what he needed. He had uh, some bad luck in the States and Canada, the last two Grand Prix. In Canada he didn't score at all, crashing. So he badly needed this for a mo morale boosting ride. There's Thorpe. Be down into the sand pit, that 15 foot leap over the top, no mistake there, then he comes to the jumps, well he'll slow down, no double jumps for Dave Thorpe, but why should he when he's got victory, and the signal will go out, Father Keith Thorpe will go out with the board on the hill, we'll see him in a moment, we shall see his father with the signal going out on the right of your picture, there he is, urging his boy on. To the top of the hill for the last time. Well, Thorpe has been magnificent, but let's think about some of the other British riders who've had an excellent performance from Kurt Nickel in both legs, an excellent first leg, and uh, up there on the points, hopefully, in this second leg too. We had a good start in this race to Perry Lease. Dave Watson, of course, went well, and Lawrence Spence uh, was in the picture in both legs until, unfortunately, he was forced out in this second race. And also, uh, Chris, uh, Brett Steele got a point in the first race in 15th place. That's his first World Championship point, I think. And a hard-earned World Championship point, but 20 World Championship points almost in the bag, if I can uh, risk the wrath of the gods striking Dave Thorpe. No problems as he passes yet another tail-ender. This is Dave Thorpe's second season with... Honda, and uh, they really must be very pleased with him, and uh, sad too that uh, another old British favourite, Graham Noyce, is not here, uh, a mystery really, Graham uh, set off from his home to get here at 6 o'clock yesterday morning, but nobody's heard sight or sound of him, and uh, really... It's Graham Noyce in the demise, and uh, this boy, David Thorpe, in the ascendancy. That's, that's true, Chris. Uh, Graham Noyce, we're all disappointed, spectators alike, that Graham's not here, because Graham's a, a real character, a fighter, and he just hasn't appeared. But uh, nevertheless, I think David Thorpe's performance here has uh, made up for everything. <laughs> crowd cheer and wave Dave Thorpe less than half a lap to go and the crowd are delighted with good reason down into the sand pit again not slowing down but not taking any risks over the first jump over the second he can see the checkered flag Dave Thorpe is going to win the second leg Overall victory at the British Grand Prix for Dave Thorpe and a really magnificent performance from this 21-year-old. We wait now for Andre Romans to go through. Andre Romans finishes in second place.
So uh, number six, Andre Vermans, Georges Jobet goes over the line now. There's Jobet, he's going to finish in third place. Then it will be Andre Malherbe, the man who leads the championship points. He will finish in fourth spot, but still a long way. Malherbe in trouble, some mechanical problem, and Malherbe still not here yet. So to confirm the winner of the second leg and the overall winner of the British Motocross Grand Prix, and there, as we speak, Andre Malherbe goes over the line. So a repeat of the first four positions. Dave Thorpe, the winner of this second leg and overall winner. Second in this second leg, Andre Broman's bike number six. Third, number 12.